Udo Mernig wrote um, a fabulous book about the history of Taekwondo, potentially quite a controversial book. Um, and I'm talking to him today. Udo Mernig, how are you doing? Fine. Thank you very much for your invitation. Yeah. So you are in, in South Korea. Uh, you work at Yongsan University. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. And it's, uh, you, you predominantly teach sport. You teach Taekwondo. It's a Taekwondo. Uh, taekwondo, type. sometimes weightlifting, conditioning, and also the English class always. Uh, students who go uh, abroad, uh, uh, we send students for internship, uh, for okay. example, to New Europe or to the States. Okay. And I teach them a little bit. And then uh, okay. I look for contacts where they can go and so on. Yeah. Okay. So you are originally German? Yes. I'm and you've lived in South Korea for quite some time. Um, I, and was it Taekwondo that took my you, life here. Was, was it Taekwondo that took you to South Korea or what happened? What was the story there? Uh, sure, Taekwondo. Um, I was in the German military team, it's a Taekwondo team, uh, from 84 to 88. So in uh, 87, I came the first time uh, for training uh, to Korea. Mm -hmm. And I was uh, training with a high school team there. Okay. Okay, and now the the book it's the, the book is the is what I want to talk about. I have a picture of the of the of the book behind mm -hmm. me here. Taekwondo, from uh, martial art to martial sport. That um, it's pr primarily a history of Taekwondo, and when I read it, it came out in two thousand and sixteen. I think I read it straight away. Um, it struck me as potentially the kind of book that would kind of caused some shock waves uh in the in the taekwondo institutions i mean it's it's a it, it, it's a controversial history in that it dates the birth of taekwondo squarely in the 1950s and not 2000 years ago yeah, not sure. 200 years ago can you tell us a little bit about the reactions to the book before we delve into the arguments what what did the korean institutions make of it Actually, from Korea, I, I haven't heard much. I don't think many Koreans really read the book, you know. Okay. In, um, it is based on my uh, PhD dissertation, basically. And um, when I had to def defend my PhD dissertation, there were a lot of problems. Or when I go uh, on conferences yeah, and uh, I present some articles, yeah, and I, uh, well, I say, okay, Taekwondo comes from karate, then quite a few people are upset. But I don't think many Koreans really read my book. Yeah? Okay, okay. Um, I mean, I, I've, I think when your book came out, it was a real, a real godsend, a real gift for people who wanted to talk about the kind of invention of tradition, the construction of tradition, and how, how political and uh, important arts like Taekwondo are in Korea. Um, but it seems to me that a lot of a lot of the general public still believe in the ancient story. I mean, what, why does that? Why is that ancient history story so important to people? It's it's a mm, uh, it's nationalism basically here. In um, they have this kind of complicated relationship uh, uh, with Japan. Well. Um, well, on the, on, the under, uh, on the one hand, they uh, absolutely despise uh, Japan and the colonial history. Uh, on the other hand, uh, so uh, um, especially the people who, um, uh, well, who founded Taekwondo, yeah? Yeah. these people they all uh, say they're kind of pro-Japanese history. Uh, I mean, all of them, except like one, uh, they all studied uh, at universities in Japan. So I'm sure they were more from the upper class. Mm -hmm. And they all started karate there, yeah? mm -hmm. and um, well, um, after the Second World War and with uh, independence and with growing nationalism, so this uh, karate past came um, well, a it was a liability suddenly, yeah? and, uh, and then um, uh, by 1971, when uh, taekwondo has be, uh, became the so-called national sport, then um, I mean the the whole history uh, was kind of whitewashed there. So all the karate elements were out and uh, it was suddenly a 2000 year old uh, green martial art. Yeah. yeah. And is that, is that the same for um, all of the, the famous Korean martial arts, all of like the Tang Sudo, Hapkido? I mean, Taekyeon Teki is different, isn't it? Taekyeon is the origin myth, isn't it? It's the origin story that they prefer. Well, 
Tekken, I don't think this was really martial art. This was more like a fo folk game. Yeah? And um, it was pretty much um, gone by the late um, uh, 19th century. Yeah? And it was really only re revived maybe in the, in the 50s. Yeah? And then um, a little bit, and then uh, in the 60s and 70s, maybe some she made some clubs at uh, universities. Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, pretty much everybody who started Taekwondo, they, uh, they trained uh, Taekwondo before. Mm -hmm. And um, Tang Sudo, well, Tang Sudo is actually part of uh, uh, Taekwondo. Mm -hmm. Before they invented the name Taekwondo in 55, uh, Jae did this basically. Well, uh, they use Tang Sudo, Gong Sudo, and Kwon Pop in the terms. And Tang Sudo is, uh, well, the Chinese characters for Karate Do. So it's Gong Sudo, uh, Karate Do. Yeah? So uh, in Tang Sudo nowadays, um, well, uh, Huang Yi, the founder of Murugwan, he refused to change uh, the name to uh, Taekwondo. Yeah? So he kept uh, the name Tang Sudo. Yeah? And uh, that's uh, Tang Sudo Subakdo. Yeah? So, uh, that this originally Tang Sudo was a part of Taekwondo. Yeah? Yeah. And see the other um, martial arts here, I mean, for uh, Judo, Judo and Kendo, I mean, it's clearly Japanese, but even um, here in the, well, it's pronounced it Komdo, uh, yeah. uh, Kendo, Komdo in uh, Korean, and uh, it's, it's usually uh, written Kumdo. Yeah? But uh, they also um, they try to change the history a little bit, and they also try to claim now Komdo uh, as their own. Yeah? But uh, of course, for Komdo is, is really difficult. You have some also head on Komdo, and, uh, and head, head on Komdo. Uh, well, uh, uh, they just cut with the sword, yeah? so it's not a competition sport. And of course, you have this in Japan also. But they also claim a two thousand year of uh, old history from Korea. And uh, Hapkido, well, Hapkido comes basically from Aikido. It's the same Chinese characters. Uh, if you, uh, well, it's pronounced it in Japanese, Aikido, in Korean, Hapkido. Yeah? Of course, Hapkido changed quite a little bit. They took in a lot of karate ele elements, and uh, mm -hmm. so you had all kind of splitter groups. Uh, in, um, but it's, it's all basically Japanese yeah, based. So looking at it from the outside, from, from the perspective of being a European and, you know, I don't read or speak any Asian languages, it looks like there's just a competition among uh, East Asian countries, especially China, Japan and Korea, to just have the oldest martial culture, to have the oldest traditions. Is that just purely to say that we got there first, we invented it, and you copied off us, or you learned from us? Is is that the kind of argument? Um, yes and no. I mean, uh, the Jap Japanese have a real martial tradition, and so do the Chinese to some extent. But uh, the Koreans actually say don't. Uh, the the mar martial tradition was kind of uh, interrupted uh, the, the last few hundred years. So uh, anyway, like unarmed um, martial arts, uh, okay, except wrestling, uh, like what they call shirim here, yeah? you, this is un, uninterrupted, but, uh, um, well, if you want to call it a martial art, I think it's more like a folk game over there. Okay, That's okay. What I think. You know? I mean, I, I, um, I went to um, South Korea a few years ago, I went to um, Muju, the, the Taekwondo the world for, a, for a big kind of conference there. And I mean, I used to try, I trained Taekwondo in the 1990s. And the stuff I saw in the demonstrations in Muju, it was a, a million miles away from anything that, that we used to do. The kicks were more flamboyant and, and, and the, the, the athleticism was just, crazy the the drama of it it was like gymnastics mixed with mixed with cheerleading or something is that just because they were the demonstration team or has taekwondo moved into a oh, no, demonstration team the demonstration taekwondo i mean of course in martial arts and in taekwondo they always did many demonstrations in the 60s already and before in karate and uh, but this modern modern uh, demonstration teams this started maybe 20 years ago. Yeah? Mm. Uh, be before, um, 30 years ago, um, the, the, the athletes who did competition, mm. they did also a uh, demonstration. And then um, around 19, early 90s, uh, they started uh, doing this uh, 
uh, um, Han, they call it Hanmadang. It's basically like they do pumse breaking and this kind of stuff. And uh, from this time on, this demonstration uh, taekwondo became more and more popular. And um, um, the past 20 years, uh, so most universities uh, with taekwondo departments, they have uh, now demonstration teams. We have a competition team, a, a, a pumse team, the so forms forms team, mm -hmm. and then a demonstration team. Uh, but demonstration is pretty popular, but they're really not. So, so basically, gymnasts. Yeah? Mm -hmm. so what what they do is tra they train gymnastics most of the time. Uh, they can't spar at all. These the students, you know. They, uh, Okay, and is there a, is there a, a sense in in uh, the Taekwondo syllabus in South Korea that there's a song self defense element to it, or is uh, self defense it? is dead here? Is it's it? dead. No. Okay. Why? In, is that? in Europe, you still have it, but in yeah. you know, if uh, for belt test, uh, you you do basically two things only. You do uh, you run a couple of forms and uh, uh, you, you you do sparring. Yeah. Right. Um, uh, you know, for for example, for um, kids uh, like elementary school kids, middle school kids, uh, if they have a test, uh, uh, tests for the black belt and so on, they're always uh, with a cookie one. Huh? Mm -hmm. But you have you have uh, two, three thousand kids, you know, and it's just like one row, next row, and uh, they do this uh, one or two pumse, and then thirty seconds sparring. Then they have the second degree. It's, it's, yeah, yeah, it's a yeah. joke, really. Every when when I was there, when I was there, and you'd get taxis places, and you any everyone you talked to was like an eighth dan. Yeah, I am eighth dan. Yeah. It's like wow. I mean, it's just it's everywhere, and it's everyone, isn't it? I mean, is that a deliberate kind of cultural policy? Is it in the education establishment, and is it is it pushed out there nationally? Um, you know, it's forty years ago, even thirty years ago. Um, they didn't have many sports uh, sports facilities, yeah? but yeah. you had uh, everywhere this little taekwondo uh, gym, yeah? and um, every elementary school school kid and um, at least the boys, yeah, they would go uh, after school into one of these gyms and uh, train. Mm -hmm. And it's also now nowadays still, uh, but nowadays you have many many different activities like football gyms and. Uh, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu is pretty uh, uh, popular here now. Yeah. It's the uh, biggest growing uh, martial art here, I think. And um, but now nowadays they have more um, different possibilities. But 30, 40 years ago, I think like most or 50 percent or more did probably uh, taekwondo at some point. And then in the military, they had to do it too. Yeah? So um, everybody had to do taekwondo in the military, basically. Mm -hmm. So in the in the kind of military training, is it is it more combative or is it still forms and and kicks and? I, it's, I, uh, it's it's really basically forms mostly. It's, it's uh, I, I don't know maybe special forces and so on uh, might be different. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But in uh, for the normal for the average guy. Like she um, wants that everybody gets a first done at least, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and you know a first done you can get here in basically one year, but it's 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 a joke, no. <laughs> <laughs> so when I was I know I looked at the the imagery, the marketing, the the advertising, the packaging of Taekwondo when I was there, and it looked like what they were trying to do in the Taekwondo one was to make Taekwondo into the ideal thing for anyone of any age. So the children have little tigers and cutesy animals, and then you see the teenagers, and it's really amazingly uh, athletic. And then they have pictures of kind of older men, maybe with a gray beard or white hair, and they're almost like sitting or like doing some kind of qigong, or they're sitting doing some kind of yoga. And they've tried to like repackage it as, this can be for you um, anything for any age, fun for children. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's I mean, how is they... that a deliberate thing? Because I never, we never thought of taekwondo like that in the in the nineties. Oh, well, for me, it was always kind of elite sport, you know. But in now, say so what it down, taekwondo is for it can be anything for everybody, age group. You have the handicapped uh, uh, 
uh, Taekwondo now. So they wanted to be for everybody. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So, uh, but you, you really, you cannot define the uh, activity anymore, what, what Taekwondo really is uh, uh, during my time. Yeah? I mean, I had it in my mind, it was sparring. Yeah? And, yeah. Uh, 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 okay, other the, uh, the other ones. Okay, for them it was forms, yeah. But uh, nowadays you have demonstration taekwondo, you you have aerobics, you have uh, all mm -hmm. kinds of stuff. So it um, there's no more core identity really uh, uh, for taekwondo. Yeah? And do you have any contact with or sense of what's happening with taekwondo in North Korea? Actually, I'm not sure with North Korea. I mean. Um, Apsia, that's of course ITF, uh, Taekwondo, and um, mm, uh, but I haven't been to North Korea, so I, I don't know too much about it, mm -hmm. but I, I think it's more, a little bit more traditional, like I, ITF Taekwondo is, like uh, mm -hmm. uh, like Cheong Yi uh, really uh, introduced it. I don't think it changed so, so much up there. Yeah. Okay, so you, um, so you teach Taekwondo and you teach sport and you teach English um, what what would your what would a Taekwondo lesson involve or a syllabus would it you do the physical stuff obviously I guess what kind, what do you do in the way of academic or reading or history or theory what kind of reading do the students get nothing, for, nothing. not in my class <laughs> it's a practical class it's for me sparring and uh, I want it to improve their uh, basic kicks it's a steps and um, combinations and so on. Of course, this also uh, changed quite a lot because of the electronic body uh, protector. Yeah? So yeah. it changed like it's lost 10 years. It's, it's crazy. It, uh, in, so uh, in, not for the best, I think, you know. Explain. Tell me a little bit more about that. Pardon? Tell me a little bit more about why it hasn't changed for the best. Uh, well, um, now the system, uh, it's not really a full contact sport uh, anymore. It's more point sport. Uh, in, um, everybody just kicks as many times as possible just to get a score. Uh, but yeah. it depends on the, uh, um, on the system, uh, which angle or where, where the centers are and so on. So, um, and um, yeah. in, most athletes, they kick now with the front leg all the time because that's the closest, uh, uh, the closest way. Huh? So and it looks awful. Huh? So yeah. um, and the problem is also the whole system is very expensive. You know, two body protectors with headgear and uh, well, scoreboard and so on. Yeah. That costs about three thousand uh, euros. Yeah. So uh, we have two different systems in our uh, uh, from two different companies uh, here. And it just costs money. It's just crazy. Huh? In, um, uh, and now, if you watch Techcom, it looks awful huh, for the spectators. Yeah. I think they made a lot of mistakes. Huh? I think that when, when we saw in the, in the 2012 Olympics and we saw the Taekwondo and we saw the, the women's boxing was in for the first time, mm -hmm. and, you, and you, I was watching these events. And, and I thought that, you know, the, the Taekwondo was really disappointing because you can win a gold medal by touching someone's nose with your foot. As, yeah. you know, and it's like, hang on a minute. That, that, that. So you've just articulated precisely the problem. It's because it, it, they just have to contact. Like, it doesn't matter if, if it, the contact is that or if it's just like yeah. that. Yeah, so you, you don't like the fact that it's moved away from something that's more physical and more combative and it's now just... In touch. I, I really don't like it. Uh, of course, you know, they, they want this because of the Olympics, they don't want uh, bloody knockouts and so on. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the headgear, you, you touch the headgear like this and then you get three points, you know. A, uh, I mean, it's really, it's not a full contact sport any longer, it's more light contact uh, game. Yeah. That's that's the main problem, I think. Do you um, pay any attention to the to the fighters who've taken Taekwondo into the UFC or into MMA? Because there there have been some fighters who who really used the impressive kicks, like because they can fire these kicks off like jabs, and they've 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 had some good effects. Have you noticed anything about that, or you don't pay attention? In, not sure in UFC. I, I mean, I, I heard from some guys, uh, say, among uh, many martial arts, say, also Taekwondo, so less Taekwondo, but, um, 
Okay, McGregor, I think, I guess he mentions sometimes Taekwondo, yeah. Yeah. but um, in, in the UFC, I don't think there are many really good kickers, you know, it's not, uh, you have good kickers in Thai boxing, huh? mm -hmm. they kick, many kick really well, but in the UFC, I don't think so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I was, I, was, I was kind of hoping that you would find a way to make your students read your books or your articles about the ideological framework for Taekwondo and so on, but you, they don't have to read anything, if that's right. Wait, wait, sorry, I couldn't. Uh. <laughs> I couldn't understand you. <laughs> students are So have you, I mean, your, your book on Taekwondo and your articles that you post uh, in various places, yeah. Um, they, they really re receive a warm welcome from scholars in, in mm -hmm. the West, definitely. I think that, they, that your works had a big impact outside of uh, South Korea. Um, do, are, are you aware of any of the responses to your work? Have, has anyone been critical or has anyone been really favorable? Mm, well, only the, the book reviews. Uh, the various book reviews, like in your journal, it's unusually positive. Uh. Yeah, in, but in in Korea, really, there's no f uh, like nobody cares. No, it's <laughs> in, uh, but in um, what was was interesting in uh, when was it in uh, 2017? We had one of these acad academic conferences in uh, San Francisco, uh, yeah. and uh, the, the, the theme was Taekwondo history. Uh, yeah. And like, of course, everybody, I and then uh, Stephen Capen and so on. Uh, okay, it comes from karate. Uh, and then uh, back then it was still the WTF. Since they removed the whole content, uh, history, philosophy content from the homepage, yeah? so yeah. you don't have any uh, history content on the homepage any longer. Yeah, yeah. And um, of course, the KTA, the Korea Tech, Tech Conversation Associations, they still have the same nonsense on it. Yeah. yeah. When, I, when I was when I was at a conference, this conference in um, in Muju. And it was like one paper after another of people talking about ancient this and ancient that and ancient Taekwondo and ancient Taekyeon. And this old guy came up to me in a break, like at lunchtime or something, and he went, you, you're foreign, why are you here? And I was like, oh, um, well, you know, they asked me to come. And he's going, why are these people saying that it's thousands of years old? Like, we made it up. I was there. We made it up in the 1950s. And I was like, I know, that's what I was going to say. And he was... <laughs> And he was like, why are you interested? Why are you here? And I mean, he was very clear. They made it up. And he said, he said he was something like 85 years old. And he said, I still try and practice every day. I can't kick high and I can't kick well, but I train every day. And I think it's the best thing. So <laughs> it was like. I, I, I believe some of the older Taekwondo guys uh, they're, they're quite much more honest about it. Yeah? I mean, it, uh, some of them, I also, when, when I talked with them anyway in private, you know, they would say, yeah, of course, in, in the 50s, we did karate, you know, That's, mm. uh, in the 60s, you no, know, sure, you no. Know, uh, taekwondo was basically still karate until the 60s, you know, the late 60s, 60s when it changed away, you know, from uh, when it developed a, a more own uh, style. Mm. I think that it's, it's from, from my view of it, which is an outsider's view of it, it seems a little bit, a little bit schizophrenic in the sense that it's a really creative art that really is developing in different ways. Like some of them you don't like the sporting way that, that, that mm -hmm. becomes more like tip tap, but, but it also claims to have this ancient lineage. I mean, why doesn't, why doesn't it just forget about the ancient bit and embrace how creative and dynamic it is and how creative and dynamic the South Korean people are or something like that? Why doesn't it just switch the message slightly? Well, I'm not sure, like, in, they, they, they could have done this, um, you know, after uh, uh, Taekwondo became a demonstration sport in the 88 Olympics, yeah? Mm. They could have gone this way, you know, and remove the um, traditional uh, elements, uh, uh, like, which, which is also basically form training, yeah? Mm. These are the traditional karate elements, but in, uh, they didn't do it, they doubled down. Uh, they they developed an uh, uh, well uh, forms competitions and uh, this demonstration taekwondo. So they doubled down on this. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So inst instead of uh, walking away from it, yeah? mm -hmm. and um, 
well now it's i guess it's too late no <laughs> <laughs> i mean you you've written a lot about um the kind of ideological elements of it do you think that i mean which which aspects of the ideological uh messages around taekwondo which which do you think are valid which which do you believe it makes you into a better citizen it makes you into a stronger moral being or something or i mean is can a martial art do that or or is that just just I, you know i think for me um well ideology i'm not sure but um i think everybody has to find his own value huh? And if, uh, for example, the cookie one or what, they give you a list, you know, like um, values. Uh, I, I find this a little bit ridiculous. I think people find their own value in uh, martial arts. Yeah? So they don't, they don't need uh, uh, some or, or organization to tell tell you uh, some abstract. Um, I don't know. Mm -hmm. so, so often, um, um, what say? sell as philosophy or, or, or ideology it, it's often just simple um, asian cultural values you know for example that so you bow or stuff like this i mean uh, this, uh, um, or uh, you know like uh, respect your elders or uh, i mean uh, yeah, well it's a confusion values usually uh, which are in here in in, in daily life yeah? this yeah. has nothing really to do with uh, purely with taekwondo yeah, yeah. So people people like it because it because it kind of reiterates or or re-emphasizes traditional values or cultural values that people already admire. Yeah, you know, I think it's a good. Okay, the connection. Selling point in the West, yeah. That's yeah. a good about. Uh, it's just um, you know if you. Um, a taekwondo uh, trainer uh, in in a gym, yeah? This this has not is not a you don't have a high position or what, yeah? mm -hmm. You you just like a gym trainer basically, you know. Yeah. There's nothing uh, different between a football coach or than a, a trainer in a, a taekwondo gym. There's nothing mythical or uh, um, it's just normal, yeah? Yeah. But in the West, of course, it's completely different presented. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so what in terms of um, in terms of your own research, do you still get a chance to carry out most research? Do you have a research project around martial arts at the moment? Um, well, I just submitted one article, and that's about the early globalization uh, of Taekwondo uh, in the fifties and sixties when it went to uh, the states and then to Europe and the mm -hmm. role of the Vietnam War. And um, this kind of uh, Cheong he also yeah? this article I just submitted, and now I want to uh, write one about Shirim, the Korean wrestling. Yeah? The, there's not too much written in English, so and uh, probably this will be my next uh, project. Uh, I think. Okay. I mean, I I have, I have to publish uh, because it's an university, so every year. So. So you just you, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> you have to really publish. About Taekwondo and, I wrote a lot, so I'm not yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello? Yeah. The, um, the, the, the topic of, um, of globalization is very interesting. So hopefully, if, if we're allowed to travel internationally next year, 2021, mm -hmm. the conference in Switzerland will be about martial arts, tradition and globalization. So maybe mm -hmm. that might be a, a, nice, a nice venue for you to come and present your research on the early yeah, of globalization of Taekwondo. That would be great. Uh, we have also uh, on November 6th, we have a conference at my university, but uh, it will be probably over Zoom, you know. And I, I was hoping that you could attend. Uh, it doesn't matter what you talk about, you know, like, and this would be very really nice. Well, it's, it's, it's easier to Zoom than it is to fly to, uh, uh -huh. to it long haul. So uh, that would be great. It's a pity, though, because you lose a lot, don't you, in the, an online world, you, you gain a lot, but you also lose a lot. I mean, I won't have any jet lag, so that'll be, that would be great, but you miss out on the social side, don't you, a lot? With that. <laughs> but Yeah, I'm, I'm not a big fan of this kind of, uh, I, I, I do this rather in person, you know? So. Yeah, I would rather, I would rather do this, this stuff in person as well. But yeah, I mean, I, I can certainly, I, I will certainly publicize it on the, the Martial Arts Studies Network channel and everything, and we can, so you're saying, that, what did you say, the 6th of November or early November? 6th of November, right. 6th of November, okay. And that will probably be an online conference, so we can, yep. we can share the link when we get the link, and we can mm -hmm. share registration well, information. You know, we, 
we uh, we got, we got to be here in our uh, well conference hall, yeah. and uh, the presenters from Korea say will come, yeah. but from the states and from Europe, of course, it's obviously it's impossible. I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, and then I mean the, the other logistical issues are like whether the internet is going to crash. I think it's sometimes better to try and record everything in advance and then maybe have a conversation about it. But yeah, no, we'll 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 keep people um, posted about that then. I mean, hopefully there might be some international movement, but it's just really hard to plan at the moment, isn't it? Really hard. Um, so yeah, um, what was I going to ask? There was one. There was something else I was going to ask you about. So. Um, what is what's the lockdown like how's the how's the training going can you do face to face foot to face kind of training in taekwondo at the moment uh, no problem uh, in you know only so um well so regular classes uh, this was all online but the teams are working out so our competition team and our demonstration team our kendo teams they all work out you know so the judo team we have it's just training, normal for them. normal Normal training, yeah. Oh. But uh, for next week, uh, 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 it's a national new, new diversity, uh, unfortunately. Uh, but yeah, I think the the connection is um, is getting. I don't know how well this will record because the connection's gone a bit flaky at the end there. So I guess I should we should quit while we're ahead, and I will say um, I will say thank you. <laughs> Um, very much, Judo, for, for taking the time. Yeah, thank you very much for your invitation. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.